Hello! Welcome back to Red Room. I promised you that I was going to do a non-metallic metal uh, Thousand Suns Marine, a pre-heresy a pre one, but unfortunately I lied. <laughs> Kill Team has happened, so instead of that we're going to do a tutorial on how to paint the Veteran Guardsmen, aka the Mighty Death Corps of Krieg. And we'll have a little, little showcase at the end of the completed squad, because it's very cool. So, without further ado, please like, share and subscribe. Please grow my little channel. And let's roll the tapo. So, with him primed, that's what we've got. Now we are going to spray him all over with some dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. Remember, if you don't have an airbrush, do not worry. You can use any number of spray paints. And yeah, now Colour Forge have literally got out a range where you can get your, you know, your dark blue, get your lighter blue, and then away you go. So do not despair. There are ways around this. And this is what it looks like now. All nice and dark blue. We are now going to use Royal Blue from Vallejo and we're going to apply it as a Zenithal highlight so from the top leaving the recesses nice and dark still and this should give us a, a nice subtle effect on our um, coat. So let's go for it. And with him dried, that's how he looks. So, I'm going to repeat this process again now, but using some Texas Blue from Citadel. Even lighter than before, we're just going to really just a little puff just to catch the last bits. And that shall do it. And there you have him. So that is us done with all of this Zenithal malarkey. And this, this can be achieved, yeah, by a number of methods. So do not despair if you don't have an airbrush. Now we're going to get on and block in all the colours. First one being black. And as you can see, I am continuing my theme of having a very nice, clean wet palette. But yeah, we're going to use some black from AK Interactive this time around. This is the first one um, of this range that I've encountered, and I yeah, I really like it. The only criticism I would have is that it's a bit fluid, and it likes to leak when you leave it in your wet palette overnight, so you might want to clean it up rather than just leave it, but I, I do like it, I like, it's nice and thin. Without, you know, lacking um, opacity. So, no finesse really. Aside from being careful with our coat because we've already done most of the heavy lifting there. And we've blocked in all the black bits on him. Now we're going to do the leather work. So. We're going to have some Rhinox hide. And we're just going to block in anything that's going to be leather. Now 
we're going to deal with his trousers. So we are using light grey from Vallejo with his trousers all sorted out. We're now going to do his leg wraps which I know have a specific term but I can't remember what that is so we are using you shabty bone. We are now going to use some olive drab from Vallejo, US olive drab, for this bedroll blankety thing at the top of his backpack. I'm now going to do the upturned bits of the coat, so the underside of the coat, the lining, there you go, there you go, that's the word we want to use. And we're going to use some of the fang from Citadel for this. Okay, while we're doing this, while he's off of his wire mount and while Luna complains bitterly, we are going to use some snake bite leather contrast paint. It's going to be watered right down just to do a smart wash with these red eggs. So we're just going to use some contrast medium. We're going to water this right down. We do not want much of any any of this going into this. We really want very limited amounts. And that's just a case of yeah, very lightly washing it into the recesses. Well, hopefully that's visible to you. Now that's dried, we are going to go on and do the trousers with the same kind of principle. So again, we've got ourselves some contrast medium. We've got some black here, we only use a very sparing amount because the black goes a long way. We do not need much at all. And in much the same way as we've just done. I'm not going to worry about me messing up the lining at the moment, that's why we've only just base coated it. We're going to move on and do some of the metallics now, so we're going to do this is gunmetal below hand right here. So all the gum metal has been painted. Hope you can see this because it's very small, very wee. Then we're gonna give that a wash of the black wash from Vallejo. I find this stuff um it's very pigment rich. So it kinda has a very grimy, smoky kind of finish to it which I, I like for certain things and, and for other things perhaps not but um so I'm running low on contrast to medium I don't want to throw too much of that around and I do think this fits the death cores kind of look so so anywhere that's gunmetal is now going to be 
doubled right down. Okay, I'm just going to do the face now. I'm going to switch now to a smaller brush. So you and I am chancing it now. So we're going to use some white. It can be any kind of white you want. Citadel if you want to suffer. And we're going to do the face mask. I wanted these to be, you know, really ghostly and skull looking. So I'm going for a proper white. You can worry about the eye lenses now or later, it doesn't matter. Later will probably make your life easier. We're going to now use some brassy brass to go with our tinny tin to start building up the gold. So exactly the same kind of principle but we're just going to leave recesses alone if we can. If we can't, it doesn't matter too much, we will use a wash to um, out the details. This is on models this small, it is very difficult. And now using Glorious Gold from Vallejo, we can just finish off doing these gold bits. Okay, all the gold is done in terms of the paint we want to put on. We're now going to mix together some Griffound Orange and some Gulliman Flesh. We're going to apply that to the gold. And this will hopefully give us a nice rich wash, which you might want to water down. Mm -hmm. We have cleaned our wet palette, you'll be pleased to note. So we're going to get on and do all the lining now. So we're going to use some rust grey and we're going to paint this over most of this just leaving the recesses clear and dark. And with that done, we now need to highlight. So we're going to use ourselves some Fenrisian Grey. And we're just using this for all of the raised bits, all these creases. This is more of an edge highlight. We're now going to do a little bit of blending. So we're going to mix this Fenrisian grey with Ross grey, create an intermediate tone. And we're just going to smooth out 
some of these highlights. We are going to be applying some contrast paint to this, which will do a lot of heavy lifting, but even so, I'd like these transitions to be a little bit more elegant. And let's base coat this book that he's holding, this here imperial looking bible thing. We're going to use some word bearers red. At last I get to say an old favourite name, Space Walls Grey. Unfortunately I, when I say that I really mean more Fenrissy and Grey, but hey ho. But we're going to be using this contrast paint and some more contrast medium to make a little smart wash up to do all this lining. And what we may do is just cover the whole thing in contrast medium to start with. And then we're going to get a little watered down mix. And like most things involving contrast paint, it is all about guiding it into the recesses, moving it around, getting yourself happy with what you've got. But if we use the contrast medium first, it just gives us a little bit of a buffer if we go a bit too hard, a bit too dark, too fast. because that may affect how nice an effect you get. Oh, and a Luna has appeared. Oh, so cute. So perfect. I will return to you when I am finished. Okay, we're going to use some Beastly Brown from Vallejo. Which is a very, very watery brown. It's not a thick bit of paint at all. And we're only going to use this to do booties. And now we're going to do the rest of the level with Doomball Brown from Citadel. Which is again a bit of a watery one as bad. Certainly not a paint I ever feel I need to water down at all. And this will cover up anything that we've currently done in Rhinox Hide, but we will leave recesses clear. We're going to use some snake bite leather from Citadel. The contrast paint variety rather than the old school paint. And we're not even going to mix this up with anything, we're going to literally put it on neat and we're just going to apply it to these. Finishes that I've always wanted to achieve with washes. There he is. And his booties are all nice and contrasty, which is definitely a real word. So we're returning back to our friend Hugh Shabty Bone for the pages of this here book. And to that we're going to add some Wraithbone from Citadel, just around the edges. And 
Now we're going to give the pages of this book a bit of age. So we're going to get some Gulliman flesh, a little bit of contrast medium. Okay, we need to go and start highlighting these leather straps. So, and the gloves, we're gonna uh, add a layer, add some Doomball Brown. And this is your Shabti Bone, and we're just gonna mix the two together. Get a lighter tone. We want to paint the middle bits, the more prominent bits of the um, strap, and the rest of it we just want to leave a, a, an edge highlight. And for the backpack, we're just going to do a sort of feathered multiple line approach to this highlight because we want it to look like scuffed leather. It's pretty hard to uh, show off what I've just done, really. But all will become clear hopefully soon. I guess the backpack's a bit of a better way of doing that. So we're going to go up a notch, adding in a bit more of our U Shabti bone. And this time we're going to just, yeah, very lightly stipple on, feather on this as an even small highlight to what we've just done. And then go into the corners and edge highlight them. And now we're all reasonably highlighted up. We are going to go and do black. So we're going to start highlighting this. I'm going to use some dark grey from Vallejo. And we're going to apply this as a very liberal edge highlight. But we will be blending this We'll be blending this into the rest of it, so don't worry. And now just to smoothen out ooh, the highlights that we've done. We're going to mix some black, any black you want with the dark grey. To make this a little less jarring. Okay, we're going to now move on to just doing a little bit of work with the face. So for this we're going to use some of our light grey. I'm also going to use some white. We want to accentuate the ghostly look of these face masks. So with this little mixture we're just going to put amount 
in the recesses under the che cheeks. some more white and we'll blend it in a bit more and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint in these lenses and we're going to use red for this so this is Mephiston red and also with this Mephiston red we're going to I like the edges of this book. Well, as I have a feeling I didn't actually record any of that. Rubbish. What we are doing here is uh, getting some Teclas Blue and um, yeah, edge highlighting everything as a final preparations before we cover the whole thing in uh, some Leviathan blue contrast paint. This is just for any crisp bits that particularly stand out like the edges of these pockets and the covers. This is also where you want to correct your mistakes. And now we're going to use the Leviathan Blue. We'll have a little bit of contrast paint, but to be honest, probably not that much. And then, yeah, it's just a case of applying it on nice and liberally. Try and mine the gold. And with all of that dried, we should have a very nice looking model. So we need to do the trim that goes around this coat. I went through a whole load of different colours and options and really racked my brains. In the end I just decided that more textless blue is the best way to go because everything else looked bit jarring a bit too you know I had red that looked too like too many primary colors um, white was just, was just no it didn't work it was too pale so in the end I thought just keep it all blue let's keep it simple okay using gunmetal from Vallejo we're gonna pick out the rest of this silver He has been assembled. I was getting to the point where yeah, there was nothing more to be gained from keeping him all apart, so we've left him overnight to fully set. So we're going to make this gold nice and shiny and bright by painting over it with some more glorious gold from Vallejo. Yeah, and leaving those recess recesses dark. Oh, all nice and shiny. We are now going to do the top of this. This bedroll. Oh, there. Can you even focus? So originally this was US olive drab, and now we've got some grey green from Vallejo. And we're going to mix that together. And 
And to give us some contrast with this backpack, we are now going to mix a little bit of Black Templar's contrast paint into a load of contrast medium, as we have done before. Creating a very, very light little wash. We're just going to put into the recesses. That's probably a bit too much. Alrighty, we're just going to do a very, very, very small amount of edge highlighting. With some intermediate blue, the very grey intermediate blue. We're not going to use much of this. Okay, let's finish off this book. So we've got yet more you shabty bone here. We will leave the recesses dark. We're going to go over a bit of this though because I think it's gone a bit too far. All right, we're going to mix some rhinoxide and some Doombull Brown together then. And then we're going to add that into the U Shabti bone. Time to return to our dear, dear old stalwart shining gold. The pot that's probably almost 30 years old, if not 30 years old. And I'm just going to apply that as a very final highlight. any gold bits that we feel need it. It's hard when things are at this sort of small scale, even for Warhammer, if you're used to doing Space Marines. We are now going to use Chainwheel Silver to just go over whatever's left. It needs highlighting, which will be any little rivets, like these. Also to highlight around the eyes, the rims around these lenses. We need to do the text on this book. So, let's see how well we can do this while filming. We're just going to do a little red sort of square up the corner here. And try and give the impression of some illuminated letters. This may be foolish. And with a tiny little bit of neatening up. I'm not even sure how visible this is. Alright. And you want to make sure you've got very, very thinned down paints for this pot. To the point that they're awash. Because then they'll go everywhere. But if it's rigging and drying out really quickly on your brush, that won't work either. Oh, with a few corrections and neatenings, that is the book finished. Oh, not really an awful lot left. We need to give these lenses a bit of interest, so we're going to use some um, rust Vallejo. We're just going to run this along the bottom rim of the lens. Again, it's worth accepting that and expecting that you will screw this up, but it's easily solved.
and then a little bit of rhinox hide just to put into the top. If you find you've obliterated all your red, don't worry, just paint some more on top. Now there only really remains to put a little dot in that island, which I'm going to do off camera because I can't guide this so well. But yeah, he's done. Aside from putting on decals, which again I'll do off camera, and some little bits of work with the base which you've seen multiple times in any of the videos I've done recently because these are all part of the same kind of kill team universe so yes I get back the next thing will be the showcase if you made it this far thank you very much please like share and subscribe and I will see you next time